Hey guys, in this video I have the SEMA X5. The X5C comes with an onboard camera while the X5 doesn't. You can always buy a camera module later on uh, for about $25 and you can uh, make it capable of recording videos and pictures as well. So I got the ready to fly kit which includes a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter, USB charging cable, uh, four replacement props, a 3.7 volt single cell 500 milliamp ba battery as well as the manual. The included transmitter has an LCD display and minimal options. The transmitter allows for two rates, so you can have it maneuverable on high rates and less responsive on the lower rates. And of course, there's a button to flip the, the uh, quadcopter itself. The lower rates are good for flying in confined spaces, while the higher rate is good for outdoors. Like I mentioned before, I also have the Wi-Fi FPV camera, which I bought afterwards for about $25. It can be installed on all of the X5 series uh, of quads by SEMA. This particular camera allows the uh, X5 to transmit video down to any smartphone via the SEMA FPV app. So essentially with this Wi-Fi camera setup, you have the SEMA X5 SW. You can also use the app to take pictures or record a video clip. The quality isn't as good as a dedicated FPV system and they are there is a bit of a lag but it's definitely not bad considering the price. You, you have to also remember that it's sending video via the Wi-Fi which means it also operates at 2.4 gigahertz uh, which means that it might interfere with the controls of the quad itself. Ideally FPV uh, is usually on the 5.8 spectrum, 5.8 gigahertz spectrum. But for a budget quad of this uh, type, it's not a big deal and the quality is sufficient. So the X5 uses the same micro T style connectors found on many of the other branded uh, quads and helis from like Hubson, WL Toys, uh, UDI, Wokera, etc. There's actually a small tab inside the battery bay that you can cut off um, that allows you to use like bigger batteries. The, the 750 milliamp ones will fit snug in the quadcopter itself. Uh, with the door closed, but if you want to use bigger ones like uh, the 950 milliamp batteries from Hobby King, the door has to re be removed and uh, replaced with Velcro to hold it in place. The battery connector also has to be relocated so that you can plug it in. Even with a 950 milliamp hour battery, the X5 doesn't seem to bog down. It's able to take off without any issues, and flight times are about. Uh, uh, about 7 minutes for the 750 milliamp hour battery and about 9 to 10 minutes for the 950 milliamp battery. So like all aircraft in my collection, uh, I'm, I'm controlling them with the Wokera, Wokera Devo uh, transmitters with deviation firmware and the NRF24 module inside it. Uh, both the Devo 7E and 10 work great with it. However, the Devo 10 does have an edge with more switches and better range. The SEMA protocol is supported under deviation nightly builds and flies even better than the stock radio since the pitch and yaw rates can be maximized. The stock transmitter is sufficient but if you want to get a bit more serious look for a full featured transmitter like the ones from Wokera. If you already have a Wokera Devo radio check out the description for the model configuration I'm using. Also check out my other videos with reviews and mods about the Devo radios. Links will be in the description or click on the annotations or cards as they pop up. 
up. So one of the easiest quads I've ever flown is my Parrot AR drone. However, it's also many times more expensive. For the cost of one AR drone, you can probably buy like a dozen SEMA X5s. The X5 is w without a doubt one of the best flying quads for the price right now. You can get a ready to fly kit with transmitter for as low as $30 on eBay and with free shipping. And replacement parts are extremely cheap. A set of props will probably cost you like a dollar. A set of motors will cost you uh, $5. If you crash it beyond repair, you can buy a full set of parts with motors and everything for like $20 if you want to fix it yourself. So one of my motors on the X5 died recently. So I had to swap it out without too much trouble. And But make sure when you buy the X5, get some spares before they burn out because they will burn out eventually. So uh, like I said, a full set of gears, a uh, full set of motors will cost you about $5. The X5 has quite a bit of screws to remove. I think there's like a couple of dozen of them. Carefully snap the two halves apart. It's hard at first, but should be easy with practice. There's two types of motors, one with red and blue wires and one motor with black and white wires. They don't turn in the same direction, so make sure you replace it with the identical one or your uh, X5 won't take off. Desolder the old motor wires and then solder the new one in its place, matching where the wires goes from the previous motor. Then snap the halves back together. Before putting all the screws back on, quickly test the X5 to make sure the blades turn in the proper direction. In this video, I flew the X5 outdoors on a windy day. It's just getting blown around because it's just so light. It probably would have worked better if I had taken off the, the blade guards, but I don't think it would have helped much because it was really windy that day. I pretty much had maximum pitch the whole time to stop it from uh, being blown away. Another issue, it's really hard to tell the front from the back outside because it's so bright and that the LEDs are hard to see. So what I did was eventually I painted mine. So I painted the back and the front different so I can see, um, see the X5 a lot better and tell uh, easily orientate it. The X5 can do flips like any quadcopter you buy and they can be easily pulled off by pressing a button and then putting some directional input. Uh, in the lower rates, you can control the X5 with a lot of precision. You can see here I'm actually flying it through a car. The X5 may look big and heavy, but it's actually very light for a quad of this size. Most of it is hollow and there isn't a whole lot inside, just a small PCB. The blade guards actually make it look bigger than it really is. Once they're removed, it looks actually pretty sleek and compact. I usually fly uh, without the landing skids and prop guards outdoors. Since parts are so inexpensive, uh, there's really no need to worry about damaging it. I think it looks a lot better with the prop guards off and flight times will be longer because it's lighter. For indoors, however, to protect your furniture, it's probably a good idea to put these on. Uh, they do add a bit of weight to it and shorten the flight times by a minute or two. The X5 is a very durable quad and it can take crashes really well. I've crashed it several times already and I really haven't damaged anything. Uh, the, the props themselves bend quite a bit so they don't break. The X5 is definitely my favorite quad right now. Even indoors, it's a blast to fly considering its, considering its size. It can take crashes and tumbles without damage. The motors actually cut out when uh, it senses resistance to prevent damage so it's pretty safe. I think this is the ideal quad for beginners and the one I recommend to anybody starting off. It's bigger than micro quads like uh, the Hubson X4 but after learning on the X5 uh, bigger hobby grade quadcopters will be a lot easier to master. If you're looking for a good flyer that won't break the bank to learn on the X5 is the perfect choice not only because of cost but the fact that it flies really well, it's stable, smooth, it's easy to fly. Anyways that's it for now see you in the next video.